بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Today we're going to talk about the power of the dua, the etiquettes and matters is accepted or not accepted Having a beautiful tool in your hand like that is priceless First of all you have to understand that even if you are disobedient slave to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula you have a better chance so never despair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy because the hadith says when you an obedient slave Allah says Ya Rabb, O my Lord Allah subhanahu wa jalla replies abdi. yes my slave but if you're a disobedient slave to Allah saying ya Rabb Allah subhanahu wa jalla says labbayka, 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 abdi. yes my slave yes my slave yes my slave it's amazing wallahi and I ask you for the sake of Allah let us use the power the tool of the dua for the simple fact is that you will get rewarded no matter what the scholars will tell you there are three ways you will get in reply first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua your supplication because if it's good for you well, number two is if you don't actually get the dua answered in this life, you will actually have something to struggle with. Meaning the dua itself will go up and struggle with something that is going to be a calamity, difficulties that you're going to be plagued with. And the third and most important one is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not actually answer your dua in this life. Know that it will keep a calamity away from you, but it will be rewarded for you in the hereafter. The reward for is abundant. As a matter of fact, the narration says, if you know and you see what happens to you in the hereafter, you would have wished for your dua not to be answered in this life, to be able to be answered in the hereafter because you've seen the reward of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. So it's a win-win-win situation. So what is holding you back? Even Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula in the narration, in the, in the ayat, says if you do this, tell them so. But this time when Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb. Right away, he did not say, tell him, فَقُلْ Tell them that. If they ask you about me, I am here, I am near. Don't tell them so. That he's cut out the middleman, meaning it's a direct relation for you. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, understand that the scholar says, الدُّعَاء مُخِّ ibada, Meaning it's the source, the root, it is the core of the ibadah, the acts of worship. Why? Because you know that you're asking Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi as the only one that will be able to grant you whatever it is that you want. Because we know that we're asking Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi has the keys for heaven and the earth, the treasures, the jobs, everything you're looking for, the health, the wealth, the spouse, the children, everything you wish for and more. So it is tawheed al rububiyyah monotheism of the lordship. Now if we know that the scholars will tell you the reason for the monotheism of the lordship, tawheed al rububiyyah is tawheed al ulahiyyah which is actually the monotheism of the godhood. There is no deity deserving to be worshipped except Allah. If we do indeed know that there is nobody else that will answer our dua, we're not asking ask anybody else there is no shirk there's ascribing partners unto Allah subhanahu wa jalla what's the deal that we only worship Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi'ula it's a beautiful feeling now let us find out quickly because the time is running the etiquettes and matters of the dua please make sure that you have it's not a fara'id it's not a, an obligation but it's called fadl now the benefits and the virtues of the dua first have wudu face the qibla Dress nice, nice perfume. You're talking to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. Make sure when you ask, ask with certainty. Don't say in shit because that is a trick of shaitan. Forgive me if you wish. Grant me jannah if you wish. No, ask Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. Forgive me, O Allah. Grant me jannah, O Allah. Keep me away from the hellfire, O Allah. There is no in shit in that essence. But understand the tricks of shaitan that will actually tell you that because to take you away also making sure that to get the best times last third of the night where Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi descends in a way befitting his majesty asking who wants to be forgiven who wants to repent who wants to run an errand anything that they need I will grant them everything that you ask for and more by the one that controls everything so how could we not but making sure what will hold you back from the dua for example unlawful source of income with us with the hadith says anna yustajabu lah. you say allah ya allah help me help me but your money is unlawful your source of income is unlawful everything is unlawful how will allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula actually ask for you this now please understand that all of these that you start with bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah and end with the salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah Allah will accept everything else. I will leave you with a final note. Please understand that Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula even accepted whom? The dua of Iblis, Shaitan, subhanallah. Oh Rabbi, anzurni ila yawmi ba'athun. Oh Allah, let me, give me a chance to actually live and do this till the uh, day of judgment. If Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula answered the dua of uh, if Shaitan, 
Will he not answer your dua? You cannot be worse than shaitan. So what are you waiting for, my dear brothers in Islam? And lastly, don't forget this poor slave of your dua. You know why? Because the angel says, Ameen, same unto you. I won't forget you, my dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Ameen wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in. Jazakumullah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.